I hope you are all right, comfortable. And for some time, we have been talking about organization of speech sounds in natural languages. And we saw that syllable is the highest unit of organization of speech sounds. Whether a speech sound occurs at the beginning of the word or in the middle of the word or syllable or in the at the end of the syllable and at the end of the word are all decided by principles, are all decided by constraints that go to make a syllable. A syllable is the highest unit of organization of speech sounds. Of course, after that you know you have words, phrases, next week we will be or even early this, even later this week, we will begin talking about how speech sounds make syllables and sorry, we have been talking about how speech sound sounds make syllables. We will be talking about how syllables make words and phrases and sentences. Okay. Today, <coughs> we will continue with how syllable helps us understand what is the use of the concept of syllable, how does it help us understand organization of speech sounds better. Okay? Number one, do you think any sound can occur anywhere? And if you look at the data in natural languages, any language, look at Telugu, look at English, look at Hindi, look at French look at any language you like, you will find that this is not the case that any speech sound can occur anywhere. There are constraints, even single consonants, even single vowels. It is not that all speech sounds can occur anywhere. In English, no word begins with this speech sound. What is this? What is this phonetic representation? Which sound does it represent? As in? Lung. As in lung, as in king, as in wrong. Okay. You will find that no word begins with this sound. No syllable begins with this sound. Okay. It always comes at the end. Okay. Similarly, there is no English word that ends in this sound. What is this? Ha. Not don't say ha. Say ha. Yeah. No ha. Ah. Then it vibrates. Now say ha. Ah. Okay. No word ends in this sound in English. They write it in a spelling. Of course, you see a, ah, you see o, oh, but they are not pronounced. It is just a, ah, not a, ah, not o, oh, it is o, oh, a, ah, okay. they are not pronounced. No, this does not occur at the end of the word. Okay. There are other kinds of, and, and this is true of all languages, not just English, not just Sanskrit. Look at uh, look at the screen and look at what kind of consonants can come together in English. If it is two consonants, you can have para, you can have, can you, you have words with pr, such as prayer, professor, okay, prize, priest, prove, pray. You have words with p, l. Can you give me words? Right. Can you give me words with parallel? Player, please, okay, plight, plumber, okay. Can you give me can you give me words with per and year? Pewer. Okay. Can you give me words with b and la? Block. Yeah, block, blast, bleed, blood, b and ra? Break. Break, break, break. Ba India. 
by that is bar ba r e beauty beauty okay correct can you give me words with k and r crush crash creek crepe can you give me words with k and la yeah close click okay climb k and ya cure k and wa quiet quiet queen quest question can you give me words with g and l glue glad yeah g and r but do you imagine we can have an english word we have an english word which has p and t at the beginning can you can you take a minute take out your notebook and look at words that are possible in telugu what kind of words what kind of consonant sounds can begin a word you have words beginning with a a e u a do you have a word beginning with ang in telugu that is angam but u mm. do you have a word beginning with this sound in telugu think hard close your eyes it's 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 look this is an exercise in thinking this is an exercise in brainstorming can you think of a word in telugu in tamil in malayalam in any indian language in sanskrit in persian in any other language can you think of can you find a word okay similarly do you find a telugu word that begins with ba and ra you there are think you know think of onset clusters in telugu what consonants can begin a word one or two or three give me some examples please not just telugu you know hindi telugu sanskrit malayalam tamil kannada marathi whatever you like we have lots of words with bra like you say brahmin okay brihad they are talking of brihad andhra when andhra is shrinking okay can you give me examples of words in telugu beginning with pra prakriti pran prasadam prasthanam prasthanam okay can you think of like this yes pran but can you think of a word beginning with p and t p and t ta tha da dha okay but can you think of a word ending in p and t gupt gupt lipt tapt hot ha huh? okay can you think of a word in telugu beginning with k and r kramam krupa krishi krishnam okay in hindi you know i I am not necessarily Telugu. You know, if you know some other language, this is your chance to test your knowledge of that language. I am encouraging you to do that for a language other than English. You know, unfortunately or fortunately, a good part of your life has been involved in learning English, though you know a lot of other languages, but we have never thought of them. Can you can you think of similar clusters in other language? Do you have a Telugu word beginning with ka wa? Ka ya in Hindi? Kya? Kyun? Ah, that is ka ya, kya ti? Ah, but ka ya? Okay. Do you have a Hindi word beginning with ba la? how many people know hindi here
Okay, can you give me a word? Ringing with a bell. Okay, can you give me a word? Ending in ba and la. Ending in la and ba. That is ba. Uh. But yes, you know. How do you wait a minute? How do you know bulb is not a Hindi word? It has come from English, but Hindi speakers use it. Uh, if you if you leave words out like that, then which words would you leave out of Hindi? You know, there will be lot of lots of words. So I will ask, accept bulb, lb. Okay, that is you know that indicates it is possible in Hindi. It may not be there, but it is possible. Okay. Similarly, look at word endings. D in English, can you think of a word ending in r and p? Sharp, sharp harp, okay. carp, warp, ending in r and b? Sharp, sharp. R and ba. Rubab. Barb, okay. curb, blurb, okay. r and t? Card, ra and d, card, card, ra and k, park, la and t. Okay. Similarly, think of Hindi. Can you think of a word ending in ra and p? In Sanskrit, in Hindi, it's all possible. Ah, hmm? oh, sharp. Okay, ra and b. Ra and wa you say garva, but many people in my part of the country we do not pronounce wa. Bengal, Bihar, Odisha, Assam, Nepal, Bangladesh, Panaras area we pronounce it as garba. So, we do not have Ravindra, we have Rabindra. Okay, so, the point is you know you can if you like I will ask you to write a note at the end semester examination. I am giving you the question for 5 marks, please write. What I, it will be either of the two, I do not know which. Write a short note on what consonant clusters are possible at the beginning of the word in your mother tongue or what consonant clusters are possible at the end of a word in your mother tongue. By mother tongue, I mean any language other than English. So, you know these are syllable based constraints. You explain and understand them better if you think in terms of onset, coda, because you suddenly find some words, you know, you say r and p is not possible at the beginning of the word, but you sometimes see them in the middle of the word coming before a vowel. You have harp, you have harper, sharper. Now, is this r and p? It comes before a vowel. Look at this, look at this cluster. How would you explain it without the concept of syllable? But with the concept of syllable, you can say that it cuts this way. They do not go together. They are separated. R is the coda of the previous syllable and P is the onset of the following syllable. And this explanation is possible only if you assume that in natural languages, there is a structure called syllable. Am I clear to you? Yes or no, please. I am also talking to people on the second bench, last bench. Am I clear to you? Sure. Okay. Please interrupt me if you think I am uh, rushing through. I know it is a lot of uh, new terms, new concepts to you in such a short time. Okay. What do you do when you have a single consonant? between vowels. Is it coda of the following syllable, onset of the preceding syllable? What do you do? Look at a word like for instance, American, right on your notebook. Now, what is the status of ma? Do you say am, a or do you say am, er, e, can or do you say a, me, re, can? You know, I mean, 
these things are you know these things are empirical these decisions are you look at the data and you see what will give you better explanation so there are often questions asked say for example in a word like this transcribe it and by the way you have a question on transcription okay so please practice it transcribe it without looking at my transcription and then compare okay american okay now what is the status of this is it the onset of the following are are we together please are you with me yes sir right understand the question is ma here the onset of the following syllable or is ma here the coda of the previous syllable what is your answer onset of the second syllable I, you know at this stage there is no please note this word in sciences you will find this latin phrase used often what is it a priori a priori beforehand you know beforehand there is no principle based on which you can say this is x or y is it onset or coda but looking at the data that is why you know it is an empirical decision please note this word by which i mean what will give you best value what will give you best value look at the data and you feel lot of red shirts come on tuesday lot of white shirts come on uh, wednesday black shirts on saturday so then you will say in india people prefer black shirt on saturdays okay it is it, but you know these are these are data based generalizations they may not be universally applied there may you may suddenly come across somebody on saturday who is wearing white who is wearing red okay but a large number of people you go to a particular place and you find that they are wearing black okay uh, uh, as it happens so these are empirical decisions so empirically looking you find that though it can go either way but you get better results if you if you if you conclude that ma is the onset of the following syllable rather than the coda of the previous syllable and if you apply that principle then you get you know this is one syllable this is another this is another and this is another correct so you make a principle saying that a single consonant between two syllables usually becomes the onset of the second syllable rather than the coda of the first but if you have two how are two or more consonants treated in the middle of the word say for example you have as i have given you at this screen look at these words you have words like do you know the meaning of this word reproach this is the you know what, what is the meaning of the word reproach look up your dictionary today when you go back to the you see looking up a dictionary is an opportunity for learning if somebody dropped a 5 rupee coin in the hostel corridor as you pass would you pick it up or would you leave it don't answer that question please uh, i know how many people will leave it reproach means scolding sir Ah, uh, it's almost uh, gentle, yeah, gentle. Look up the dictionary. I didn't want them to, I didn't want to give the meaning publicly because I want people to look up their dictionary. You know, these are learning opportunities. Don't don't miss them. It doesn't matter if you don't pick up a five rupee coin. Anyway, you don't buy anything these days in uh, uh, with a five rupee coin, but you can buy a lot of things with a word. Okay, so look it up. Look up the meaning and the pronunciation of. okay let's take let's compare reproach with extract x sorry x tract please transcribe it and then compare your transcription with mine but don't copy mine first do it on your notebook then then compare with mine so this is
reproach and this is extract okay now the, the question arises when you have two consonants in the middle of the word and you have two consonants together here in the middle of the word you have two consonants or three consonants of actually you have four here can you see are we together please yes or no yes sir yes or three people are with me entire class please are you with me yes, yes sir. sir okay here we have two consonants in the middle of the word here we have one two three four do they make onset of the following syllable do they make the coda of the previous syllable or do they make both what is your answer okay once again you know there cannot be any a priori answer there cannot be any a priori answer right there is nothing in linguistic theory that stops them from becoming the coda of the previous onset of the following but you look at the data and that is where you know your databases come in, in entire language engineering you need to have rules you need to have a look at the units the data okay so if you look at the data you find that there are words that begin with this cluster okay in english which is where this word comes from you have words beginning with this cluster can you give me a word street straight strike streak streak strip strong strength okay lots of words lots of words with this cluster but is there a word that begins with this can you think of a word that begins with kasa k s no not in indo aryan languages not in okay sanskrit has a cluster of consonants when you say kshetra or but then it changes it no longer remains a plosive okay so you then conclude that those consonants are, please give me your total attention those consonants you know and there are other words you come across you routinely come across clusters of consonant transcribe it this is what is this inhibition you have two consonants here coming together you have words like corruption okay pasha coming together do you have a word that begins with pasha do you have a word that begins with na ha do you have a word that begins with kasa so a golden principle is a golden principle is that when you have two consonants okay coming in together in the middle of a word ask yourself if they make the if they ever occur at the beginning of a word if they do then they are the onset of the following word and if they don't then they go to the coda of the previous syllable sorry if they occur together then you they can be the onset of the following syllable but if they don't then they can become the coda of the previous syllable or they can be split in between look at examples like reproach so what will you say does it go to onset or coda following this principle you will say this is the onset this is the onset and this is the nucleus this is the coda in this syllable in this case in the, for this syllable this forms the onset look at this cluster can you draw a tree diagram for extract please on your notebook 
only extract only this and assign it to either you know onset coda or onset as you feel. Draw a T diagram to show the relationship in both these syllables. Okay? Do it and then compare with mine. Please compare your, compare your work with the derivation I have given on the board. Did you get it right? How many people got it right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, not bad. Okay. If you made any mistake, please change it. These are mechanical. You know, these can be predicted. Computers can do it. You do not even need an intelligent application. You just need some expert systems, databases and they will apply across the board okay, without any difficulty. But a golden principle is which works largely, you know 99 percent all right in languages of the world saying that if you have two consonants in the middle of a word, then assign them to onset if they begin a word, assign them to coda if they end a word, otherwise you split them in between. Okay. Pretty simple, you know. Can you do can you do another word, a word like aptitude, transcribe it and then do it, a word like aptitude, quickly.
please compare your work. It has three syllables, aptitude, or you can say two onsets here, tude. You can have both aptitude, aptitude. Okay. What we have done here is these two consonants come together in the middle of a word. In continuous speech, you know, they follow each other, but they may follow each other in a stream. This is where the concept of syllable helps. They do not belong to the same group. Can you see the point? Am I, do I have your attention please? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right. They do not belong to the same group. Whereas, pa makes the coda of the, pa makes the coda of the earlier syllable, the preceding syllable, ta makes the onset of the following syllable. Okay? And you can mechanically apply it to other words. I will copy these slides to Mahesh and I will request, I will expect you to look at these words and draw their T diagram, syllable structure on your notebook. At the end semester examination, I may give you a word from Telugu. Okay. I may give you a word from Tamil and I may ask you to or I may give you words from English okay. and I may ask you to split them into different syllables showing which consonant goes where. Are we together? Is it okay? Do you understand? Yes, sir. All I am trying to do is to tell you how sound speech sounds are organized together. You see in a running speech as I am speaking now as you speak when you talk to your friends, give a presentation, we do not even bother about these little things, but because mind the powerful instrument it has and the knowledge of language that it has comes into application and this is how we organize our speech sounds. Okay? Look at some other concepts. We have been talking about uh, syllable structure and organization, reorganization. You can work out, you can work out uh, these examples which goes to where do you split them for a syllable. When you have a word like address, do you say add and res? Following this principle, what do you do? You have a and dress, but and you have similarly, what do you do for applaud? A uh, and then Applaud, aptitude, target, okay? uh, request the same way. We do not say Rick and then West. Okay? You do not get as good results there. Right. How many different kinds of syllables can there be? Okay? There is an old look at the look at this word, look at this word, and if you apply labels. If you use a computer and say all consonants will be labeled C, all vowels will be labeled V, then you see this has no consonant. You have V, C, what is this? C or V? C, what is this? V, what is this? C, what is this? C, what is this? V, what is this? C. Now you will see that some syllables are not some, in some syllables V is not necessarily followed by a C. In this case, look at this syllable, okay? this syllable, this box. Okay? Is V followed by a C? No, but look at this case, a V is followed by C. Look at this case, a V is followed by C. Can you look at, can you take any other word, you know from the previous, take a word like address, write C V C V. I okay? will also do it here. Take another word, applaud, do C V C V. Or take another word, request, 
and do CVCV. Okay. You can compare with mine. I have just done two address and request. Now, look at the syllable structure here. This syllable, it does not end in C, but the following syllable ends in a C. Okay? In the first syllable here ends in a C, the second syllable ends in a C. So, all syllables that end in a C, please write, are known as closed syllable. But all syllables that end in a V in a vowel are therefore open syllable. Okay? In modern linguistics, where we do a lot of algorithmic, you know, computer generated uh, circus, computer generated generalizations, etcetera, you can say the same thing slightly differently. In computer generated things, you can say where rhyme is branching. In this case, Look at the tree diagram for the syllable re quest. Okay? I'm getting abstract. Are you with me? Am I speaking too rapidly? Uh, do you understand me? <laughs> yes, yes. Sorry. Uh, please pardon me. I know I'm talking about a lot of new things, new abstract concepts, not directly relevant to you uh, for your immediate need. But you know, we are trying to understand how nature organizes itself and in this case, the examples are from language. Basic principles are the same, whether you study molecular physics, biology or language. Okay? Try and understand, please. We can look at the same thing in a, in, in a slightly different way and perhaps we can come up with better explanation. Rather than say, what ends in V, what ends in C, we can draw a tree diagram of the syllable. So, for example, this is one syllable, it has an onset, onset is r, it has a rhyme, rhyme has a nucleus, nucleus is e, it does not have a coda, there is nothing here. Compared with this, look at the other syllable, we have a syllable here, please draw it and then compare with mine, it has an onset it has a rhyme, onset has two consonants, onset has ka and wa, rhyme has a nucleus which is a and a and coda which again have two consonants s and ta. Did you draw it correctly? Everybody please, did you draw it correctly? Did you? Sorry, please I am forcing you to say yes. I hate myself, I am so sorry. Okay, I wish we had more time, you know. I wish you were not forced to do this course. Okay? I hope some of you have opted for it. Now, look at the geometry of the tree. Okay? In this case, can I have your attention? Complete attention. So, if necessary, close your eyes and then see. You know, see with closed eyes. Okay? In this case, there is no C following it. Correct? In this case, the rhyme does not branch, rhyme is linear, there is nothing here, this is useless. Okay? Do you see the difference? Now, compare it with this, this syllable. In this case, a V is followed by a C, you see, V, C, sorry, the, I wrote the other way around. C, V here, C, C, V, C, C. Now, look at the difference. We said that a syllable that ends in V is an open syllable, a syllable that ends in C is a closed syllable. The same fact can be represented a lot better, intuitively much more satisfyingly, if you say that an open syllable, not always, but in this case, here is a non-branching syllable. The tree has 
no branch, one line, one line, one node. But in this case, you see the rhyme branches. We have both nuclear and coda, and again coda branches. Okay? Therefore, please write, we have the concept of light and heavy syllable. Light and heavy syllable. Sanskrit uses terms like you may have heard guru and lagu. Okay? Heavy syllable, you know, syllables with samyukta akshara, samyukta akshara with cl clusters of consonant, with long vowels make heavy syllable and others syllables without a consonant in the coda, without a long vowel make a light syllable. I will copy these slides to you, work out the syllable structure and you will very easily see that quite often an open syllable, quite often not always, there are you know other situations, quite often an open syllable is also a light syllable, quite often a closed syllable is often a, uh, a heavy syllable, but not always, there are other things you know uh, come to. But basically see the pattern, how speech sounds organize themselves into a variety of groups. You can for instance do this exercise, you can look at words like deny and draw a tree, tree diagram. Do you think it branches? Do a tree diagram for deny. So, for onset here you have d rhyme, there is nucleus e, no coda in the first syllable in deny, d ni, in d there is no coda, but in the ni let us see. So, you have onset na, and you have rhyme which has a nucleus but no coda, but nucleus is long, you have a diphthong i, deny. So, even when it does not end in a consonant, it is a heavy syllable. Why is it a heavy syllable? Because the nucleus here, the rhyme here branches, it has more than one node and because it has more than one node, it is heavy. Had it, if it had only one node, it would be light, because it has two nodes or more, it is heavy, you know, much more satisfying, you know, uh, geometry intuitively. You can look at words like denote, detest, you, if you draw the tree diagram, you will find that they also answer this criterion eminently well. You know, you can say that some syllables are heavy syllables when they have a branching rhyme, whether or not they have a coda, there may be branching nucleus or they may be branching because of a nucleus and coda. Okay? You can make syllable based generalizations. If you want to ask yourself why is it? that in some varieties of English in India, in the world, develop is pronounced as develop. Why is E lost, the second E, second vowel lost? The answer is explanation is pretty simple. It is quite often the case that a light syllable after a stressed syllable is deleted. In this case, look at the word D E V E L O P. There is few in, in some varieties of India, some varieties of English in India, you stress the initial syllable and then the light syllable following it is deleted. You know? So, syllable structure helps you understand some of these generalizations. Similarly, you can ask yourself why is it that some people pronounce S P R A Y as sapre or some people pronounced F I L M as 
as film. Why do they do that? And the answer again is very simple. If you look at them in terms of syllables, you can say in some of these languages, you can say that in some of these varieties, in some of these varieties, you see here at the extra added E, you see extra added A or extra added A. In some of these varieties, S and P are not legitimate legal onsets. And because they are not legitimate, because they are not legal onsets, so what happens is the speakers bring another vowel and turn the extra consonant into either an onset or a coda and get legitimate structure. So, it happens in film, so it happens in agonist, so it happens in a lot of other words. It is better if you work out, if it, it is better if you work out some of these examples on your own, you will then understand this better. Why is it not moving? When you look at some syllables together in a language, say for example, look at this. Imagine I do not give you the word, I just wrote nitrate in phonetic transcription, because you know in a speech there is no pause. Now, when you write nitrate as I have written on the screen, what word does it make? Is it nitrate or is it a chemical called nitrate? nitrate. nitrate. How do you know? How do you know? We do not. The answer is we do not, because syllable structure cannot take you beyond a certain point. It has certain usage, it has certain utility. If you have a word like a name in a continuous speech, now a name can mean anything. It can be an aim or a name. Okay. Which of the two is it can be inferred, can be deciphered, can be learnt only if you look at larger data. What I am trying to tell you in other words is that syllable is a good stuff, is, is, a, is a good enough concept for us to understand the organization of sounds. But if we ask higher level questions like what words they make or what they do not, then that is a higher level question which cannot be answered at this. Similarly, you know you have a sentence called ice cream, sorry an utterance called ice cream. Now, is ice cream, how do you split it? Is it ice and cream or is it I and scream? Okay. Can you split this, the next group of sounds? Let me see how many words you get out of them. Can you do it on your notebook? Can I take two minutes more? Okay. What sentence do you get? Yeah, the sentence is we'll take a dozen. But this conclusion can be reached only when you know when only when you have the higher level knowledge, you know, sentence level knowledge, word level knowledge, speech sound level knowledge, syllable level knowledge can only give you organization of speech sounds in syllables similar thing you know in Hindi. Can you tell me how many words are involved here? Those who know Hindi please. Can you split them into Hindi words or syllables?
this is an 18th century, I took the first two lines of an 18th century poem perhaps from Hindi. Can anyone please try and tell me, can you stick your neck out? It is Narak, okay. A good attempt. This is the syllable division. You know, those cross double crosses indicate word boundaries. Can I have your attention, please? In 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 the literature of linguistics, this includes this indicates word boundary. Okay. Now see. Nar kaparan clothes ko darat hai you know when you go to the temple you don't like prostrate oh my clothes will get spoiled but you don't fear falling in hell nar kaparan men clothes fear nar kaparan ko darat hai narak hell paran falling nahi you know syllable structure can be identical now see the now see the you know beauty and problem of language the problem of language is the two parts of this line nar kaparan and narak paran do i have your attention please on the one hand you have nar kaparan men and clothes on the other hand you have narak paran hell and fall but their syllable structures are more or less alike. Now, how do you know what is what? You know because you have a higher level knowledge. You can go beyond the speech sounds. You can see which speech sounds are organized which way. That is the kind of knowledge if the computer, uh, you know, if the computer acquired that kind of knowledge, then the computer will be able to. So far, computer can work jolly well. You give it syllable structure and the computer will split it. Okay? But if you wanted to process them into words, break them into words, word recognition, then your computer will require higher level knowledge, this kind of knowledge. And it is true not just of Hindi, not just of English. I think I will stop here. Thank you very much. Have a good day.